Um, I'm ACS CANS uh, Director of Federal Government Relations. Happy to be here. I work on um, PDUFA overall, um, but what I'd like to do is take a step back and sort of give you um, some context as to um, what we've been doing around diversity in clinical trials um, and uh, the needs and patient uh, barriers um, as it relates to clinical trials. Um, and then I will loop that back into uh, the PDUFA process um, and even uh, talk about um, some gaps um, that we are currently seeing. So to take a step back, um, Early last year, um, so early 2021, um, we uh, started off a really great um, equity and um, an equity project to take a look at what patients are um, experiencing and what policy gaps um, are identified. And we did that with the National Comprehensive Cancer Network and uh, with the uh, National Minority Quality Forum. Um, and when we did that, um, there were several gaps that were identified in patient care um, as it relates to barriers. Um, and several of them were around um, clinical trials um, as it relates to patients overall, um, including cancer patients. Um, around the same time, um, our uh, internal scientists and our policy experts were taking a look at um, various barriers for patients um, and diversity um, issues around participation for uh, clinical trials. And um, the actual recommendations um, and solutions uh, for these uh, policy gaps that were identified um, really aligned with the equity project that we were doing with partners. And um, those, uh, those um, gaps um, that were identified were around um, three main um, portions of um, cancer and all clinical trials. And the first is around um, the fact that it's a barrier for patients um, to have to take time off work, um, to have to pay for transportation, to have to pay for childcare, lodging, meals, um, out of pocket. So all non-medical fees um, that they have to pay um, to be a part of these cl clinical trials um, is a barrier for, of par for participation. And so um, filling that barrier and allowing for trial sponsors um, to have a safe harbor uh, to be able to provide um, patients with these non-medical fees is one of the policy recommendations and solutions that came out of both the barriers report as well as um, the equity project. Um, another is, as we've all seen, um, uh, you know, with um, the pandemic um, and uh, the need to go virtual as we are right now. Um, so in terms of clinical trials um, and uh, the importance of participation in decentralized clinical trials, one of the barriers that we saw for patients um, in both of these projects and reports are that um, patients are unable to um, have the technology that's necessary to participate in these decentralized clinical trials um, and therefore um, providing, again, uh, trial sponsors a safe harbor to allow to pay for those um, you know, technology needs for patients to participate um, is another solution uh, that was recommended in both the policy report as well as the uh, equity project. Last and certainly not least, um, another uh, gap that was identified was around um, issuing guidance and not having guidance around uh, decentralized clinical trials um, for improving uh, demographic diversity um, at the Department of Health and Human Services. And so a solution um, that was recommended uh, is to require uh, Health and Human Services to issue guidance on how to conduct decentralized clinical trials to improve um, participation um, of uh, diverse patients across the board. So moving forward, um, we worked with um, 
both the House and the Senate um, to introduce a bill. Um, and as Remy mentioned, um, PDUFA is uh, under the jurisdiction of both the House Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as the Senate Health Committee. Um, so we um, were strategic in asking um, our uh, bill sponsors to be housed in those two committees. Um, and the bill is uh, titled the Diverse Trials Act. Um, it's sponsored by two doctors in the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Um, and it is, uh, that's Dr. Bouchon um, and also uh, Dr. Ruiz. Um, and then in the Senate, um, we have uh, Senator Menendez and Senator Scott um, that have, uh, that have the companion bills um, introduced in the Senate. So we've been working um, very closely with both the House Energy and Commerce Committee um, as well as um, partners. Um, in fact, um, the uh, day before um, the uh, House subcommittee markup um, for PDUFA in the House Energy and Commerce subcommittee, I should say, um, we actually were able to um, co-lead a letter to the Senate Health Committee and to the House Energy and Commerce Committee on provisions um, to be included in uh, PDUFA. And we had um, almost 90 um, partner organizations that actually signed on to that. Um, so there's been a lot of um, partner support um, in this uh, across the board um, because it's it's really seen as something that's um, a barrier for uh, patients. And um, we were really happy to see that in the um, house version, um, there was uh, some guidance. Um, one of the three uh, provisions was included in, um, in PDUFA in the house version. Um, and it requires um, uh, issuing of guidance on how to decentralize uh, clinical trials. Um, and so that is a huge step forward. Um, and, you know, one of the, um, one of the other points that, um, earlier uh, in the presentations that Remy was making um, was around the potential riders um, that we might see, um, you know, moving forward as, um, as uh, the House version goes um, to the House floor um, for a vote and then the Senate version, um, you know, works its way through and um, into a Senate vote. Um, at that point, there will be, you know, some discussion around conference. And when that happens, um, there are some writers um, that we will be seeing um, coming out of PDUFA. And, um, you know, we've been working um, alongside uh, partners um, to uh, try um, our best to get um, the other two um, patient-centered uh, provisions included. Um, so, and that, you know, just to repeat myself, um, <laughs> apologies. Um, but if you have any questions about this, uh, please let me know. Um, but the other two provisions that we are still working on, um, hopefully getting a rider um, onto PDUFA for uh, are one, um, creating a, a statutory safe harbor uh, for um, trial sponsors to be able to provide um, patients with non-medical fees associated with clinical trials. Um, so therefore to remove that financial burden and barrier for them um, to participate. And then the second would be to allow trial sponsors uh, to provide uh, technology uh, that would be necessary to facilitate a decentralized clinical trial um, that they otherwise um, may not uh, be able to um, afford to have. Um, so removing another financial barrier, um, but this one around uh, technology. Um, so with that, uh, if there are any questions, um, please let me know um, and I will hand it back. <laughs>